Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today I want to look at yet another way to calculate the matrix exponential. Namely, I want to look at using what's sometimes referred to as the modal method or modal technique or diagonalization. It goes by a lot of different names. So I hope today is going to be a little bit of a shorter discussion because we're going to build on a lot of topics we discussed earlier. Namely, um, hopefully everyone knows what this is by now, right? We are looking to calculate this matrix exponential, okay, where you have a square n by n a matrix and I need to calculate this state transition matrix or matrix exponential, right? So we already looked at different techniques like the Laplace technique. So today, let's look at uh, what I think is actually the most insightful and powerful way to do this. That's called the modal method. So to do that, what we want to do is let me refresh your memory and recall that in a previous video, we discussed the idea of a similarity transformation, right? So if you have some matrix A, you can pre-multiply by T inverse and post-multiply by T. As long as T was invertible, you basically have a similarity transformation where you take this matrix A and you turn it into some similar matrix A tilde, right? Now, the world is your oyster in terms of what do you pick as this transformation matrix T. In this technique, in the modal technique, what we're going to want to do is calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of your original A matrix, okay? Once you have those eigenvalues and eigenvectors, what you can do is you take all of the eigenvectors and you stack them up in column fashion. So the first eigenvector of the A matrix, you stick as the first column, the second eigenvector is the second column, etc, etc, right? So again, what you're doing is you're making a matrix of eigenvectors, and I want to stress that you are making these eigenvectors in column format, right? We're going to take a look at an example later where you just have to be a little bit careful, right? Again, I'm just stressing, make this the column wise, right? So here's first eigenvector, second eigenvector, et cetera, et cetera. Do not go row wise, right? Some people might try to do that and you're going to, you're going to mess yourself up, right? So provided you make this transformation matrix T out of all the eigenvectors in column format and if your eigenvalues are distinct, then what's going to end up happening, right, is this is the idea of diagonalization, right, is this A tilde matrix, by the time you perform the similarity transfer matrix, the uh, transformation, the A tilde matrix is going to be completely diagonal and it's going to have all of the eigenvalues of the original A matrix on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, right? So that was the idea of diagonalization. Now, where does that come in to our matrix exponential? Well, tell you what, let's just rewrite this here. Okay, so you said we said a tilde is t inverse at. So same thing. I could just solve for a here, right? So the other way you could write this, I could solve this, and I could say a is the same thing as what is this? T a tilde t inverse, right? I just kind of pre multiplied by t, post multiplied by t inverse, and I think you all see the matrix math, right? So you get this, right? So now let's substitute this expression for a into our matrix exponential, right? Just put it in here for a, right? So now our matrix exponential is going to be e to the, now what is uh, a? a is the same thing as t a tilde t inverse times lowercase t, right? So again, these are matrices. So you know what? Let's uh, let's move the t, the lowercase t in. So in other words, what I can do is I could write this whole thing as t times this thing a tilde lowercase t times t inverse, right? Okay. You know what? You could call this other matrix here something else. I don't know what you want to call it. Anything like p or something like that, right? So you could write this thing as T or sorry, e to the t p t inverse, right? Okay. Now, again, remember in our video where we discussed the introduction to the matrix exponential, we looked at different properties of the matrix exponential, and one property of the matrix exponential is that if you had uh, a matrix uh, exponential which was a product of these three matrices, this first matrix and this second matrix, right? This t and the t inverse, they can kind of fall off. Um, to either side, right? So in other words, as long as this was a T and a T inverse, right? I guess this is not an arbitrary three matrices. It happens to be ma matrix, another matrix, and then the first matrix inverse, right? Anyway, what I'm trying to get is you got to remember that I could write this now as basically T times E to the P times T inverse, right? Okay. So I haven't really gotten away from calculating a matrix in, uh, exponential, but I've made it easier. So for example, let's just resubstitute in what P was. So this is now A tilde T times T inverse, right? 
Okay, so you still got to calculate this matrix inverse here, right? But what's the beauty of this? The beauty of this is this A tilde times T, right? What does this thing look like? A tilde times T, in fact, here it is. Here's A tilde, so all you got to do is multiply by lowercase t, right? Which is multiply by lowercase t, or I can move this inside, right? It's just lambda 1t, lambda 2t, lambda, da, 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 lambda nt, right? So the nice thing about this is this is still diagonal, right? And again, in our video where we discussed the introduction of the matrix exponential, where we talked about properties of the matrix exponential, the matrix exponential, if your matrix is diagonal, is super easy, right? It's just you, you take E of each diagonal term or you exponentiate each diagonal term. Again, I don't know if that's a real verb, but I think you get what I'm saying is that this term right here, it's just going to look like, again, here, let's write the T here, but this thing here, E to the A tilde T, this is going to be nothing more than E to the lambda 1T, E to the lambda 2T, da 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 da, E to the lambda NT, and then zeros everywhere else, right? So that's what this green term becomes, is this entire thing, right? And then you obviously have to multiply by T inverse, right? So look at that. This is actually a super easy way to go about this. And this is gonna yield some insights into the behavior of linear systems in a second. But for the scope of this discussion, all I wanna talk about is just how to calculate the matrix exponential. We will leave the analysis of, of how this impacts our analysis on uh, stability of linear systems and all that kind of stuff for another video. But this is basically the formula of how we can go ahead and calculate the matrix exponential using this modal technique. It's actually surprisingly simple, right? You just need to find the matrix of all the eigenvectors of your original A matrix and its inverse, which if the eigenvalues are distinct again, right, we should be guaranteed that uh, T is non-singular and you should be able to do this, right? So if that's the case, we then have this nice diagonal format of A tilde T, and you basically just take e to each example, uh, each each eigenvalue times t, right? So this is a simple way to go about calculating. So tell you what, let's jump over to the computer and do this for a concrete example. All right, so here we are in Mathematica, and here's the A matrix that we were using for our other investigations and examples. So let's use it again here, just so we have something to compare with. So the first thing we need to do now is get the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A, right? That's our next step. So let's use Mathematica's eigensystem fun function and pass it the A matrix, and then this is going to return basically the eigenvalues and eigenvectors in some temporary data structure. The eigenvalues should be the first element of this temporary data structure, and then the eigenvectors should be the second element, although we are gonna have to look at what it actually is spitting out. So let's go ahead and um, do this, right? So we have all of these inputted. Now the issue is that this, eigenvector object that it spits out. Matt, for whatever reason, we've talked about this in the past, that I, uh, Mathematica gives you the eigenvectors in row format. So again, this is the first eigenvector. This is the second eigenvector here. So we don't want them in row format. We want them in column format, right? So the transformation matrix that I want to use is the transpose of this. So again, that is this thing, right? And again, we can just double check to make sure that this in actually does work. So this theoretically is the first eigenvector now, right? We have it correctly in the column format, right? So if that is true, then we should have a dot v1 should equal, what is the first eigenvalue? I guess we should have looked at that. Maybe let's look, let's look at the eigenvalues, okay? Okay, there we go. So this should be negative root three, times v1, right? That should be true. There we go. So this works out, right? And the same thing, if we did this for the second eigenvector, if we said v2 was this, this should now be positive root 3 times v2, and that is true. Okay, great. So we are confident that this is the eigenvector matrix with eigenvectors in column format. So we can use that as our transformation matrix T, okay? So now what we can do is we can use this to diagonalize the A matrix, right? In other words, we can make A tilde, which is inverse T dot A dot T, right? And then let's look at what we end up with. OK, 
Okay, and well, I guess what we should probably do is simplify this as that didn't look diagonal, but now it looks diagonal, right? So this is perfect, right? So A tilde is now diagonal. So what we have at this point is we can now use the expression we had earlier on the board uh, to calculate the matrix exponential, right? And just to save yourself time, remember, I think we said that that was this expression here, right? So now we basically have all of these terms, right? So e to the a tilde, this is super easy now because it's basically just, we can, we can write this, how about, how about let's write this, how about uh, middle term, right? Which is this e to the at is, we know this should just be e to the minus uh, root three minus this eigenvalue, right? Let me just write this, oops, come on here, like this. Uh, t, 0, 0, and then the other one should be e to the other root, which I guess was positive root 3, t, right? So that's the middle term, right? That's this term right here. And we already know what t is, right? t was up here. So in fact, you know what? For, 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 for better understanding, maybe what we should do is let's just write this out manually so we can see what this should look like. So we should have now that phi of t should basically just be, here's t times the, uh, actually, let's make this look a little bit nicer so I can grab it. Oops, uh, I want this in matrix form so I can see what it looks like, right? It looks like this. Should be this times this times t inverse, right? Okay, so just to be completely verbose, um, this is what we should end up with, right? So as you can see, this is just a bunch of matrix multiplications. So let's just do this. It's T dot middle term dot inverse T, right? So this theoretically is our matrix exponential like that. And in fact, you know what? Let's simplify this thing, okay? So it should look like that. And actually, you know, let's look at this in matrix form because that's probably a little bit easier way to stare at this thing. There we have it. So this is the matrix exponential calculated using this modal or diagonalization technique. And again, let's just make sure that this agrees with Mathematica's matrix exponential exp function of the original at right that's what we should have right this should be true and again let's throw a little simplify on this just to make sure this works and voila there we have it this actually works out so this works uh quite reasonably right all right, so there you have it, a pretty easy way to calculate the uh, state transition matrix, AKA the matrix exponential, in cases where the eigenvalues of your A matrix are distinct. Now, um, we alluded to earlier that the reason I like this method so much is that it's gonna allow us to understand and gain insight into the behavior of linear systems and stability and eigenvalues and how all these things are linked together, um, mostly from this expression right here. And in fact, let's talk about this in a future video where we will link up how this particular expression and decomposition of the matrix exponential relates to system stability. So uh, with that being said, I think this is probably a great spot to end this particular video and I hope to catch you on one of these future discussions. For example, that one there where we'll actually learn about how it's applied to a real state space system. Um, and we'll talk about that at, like I said, a future discussion. Remember, the new videos come out every Monday, so I hope we'll catch you at one of these and we can all learn something new together. So until then, I think I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.